Hey everyone, it's Maury. I'm at home and I'm planning the next RV project because of course I am. I can't possibly let some time pass without tearing it apart and rebuilding it. When I tell you about it, it's going to make sense. You know, when I bought the Rialto, I bought an older RV specifically for the purpose of um, kind of modernizing it, you know, bringing it up to date with some current technology. The van is a 2004 model, so it has a generator and um, you know a microwave and stuff like that but it's based on some older tech and it's time to update it so I'm gonna walk you through my project planning and it'll make a little more sense once you see some of that so let's take a look okay first I will go over how the van sits right now so we'll call this current sorry about my handwriting hopefully you can read it so this is the, the way that it's currently laid out. So we have the engine starting battery up front where it normally is. Um, there are a pair of deep cycle marine batteries right here with an isolation solenoid. And so the alternator, which is sitting over here somewhere, um, charges the battery in the van, but it also charges the coach batteries. The alternator in the van is a slightly improved alternator, but it's not a regulated alternator. So this is a 150 amp high output alternator, but it is not a regulated alternator, meaning it won't cycle the uh, power up or down based on load for um, heat purposes. So in if you think about like uh, a typical underhood generator like in the Heimer Active or the Road Trex or other ones, um, they will have sometimes a system called a Balmar, and that is a regulator that uh, ramps down the demand at lower RPMs to prevent the alternator from overheating. Mine does not have that, but it doesn't need it either. It's just charging these uh, regular flooded batteries and the regular battery for the engine. And that's really all that that's meant for. So these two batteries, they're 105 amp hour flooded batteries. And because they're lead acid batteries, they really are only good for about a 50% discharge. They are deep cycle, you can go higher than 50, but it's still going to start affecting your, your longevity. So these batteries run the lighting in the van of which there are a few. Um, it also operates the furnace. We have a propane furnace and then it's fired off of the 12 volt system. The water heater is 120 and that becomes important. Um, so the water heater is 120 or it has a heat exchanger with the engine which is kind of a nice feature because the, the heat from the uh, engine running actually warms the water in the water heater. So by the time you get to your destination, your water is hot. Back here we have a generator, and this handles the load for the 120 uh, AC. And that would operate the air conditioner, which was a roof mount, along with the water heat. Well, the water heater is underneath here. Runs that and that and it also is able to charge the house batteries using an inverter charger. So there's a couple of things going on here. One, the inverter charger that comes in this older van is only good for about 13.6 volts. Um, and that is not enough to appropriately charge a lithium battery. There are some uh, other features that the van has, so for instance, I have a switch in the cab that will allow me to jumpstart the van battery with the coach batteries. Um, so if, you, if your battery is dead, you can jumpstart your own vehicle. That's a nice feature that I don't want to lose. The water pump, uh, there's one here and one here, and those are 12 volt. And then the microwave, where it says here above three burner stove, the microwave obviously is 120. So really there are three things that require AC power. The um, air conditioner, which is now gone, the water heater, and the microwave. So I replaced the air conditioner with a, uh, a fan, so that's now a 12 volt appliance. 
my refrigerator here um, used to be a propane slash 120 slash 12 volt a three-way um, it wasn't efficient on the 12 volt at all it drew a lot of power and it was meant just for when you were driving the 120 would have run the refrigerator as well um, and it, it was something you had to manually switch I have since changed this out as well for a chest style um, portable refrigerator which is also 12 volts so you can see kind of a growing pattern here everything is uh, 12 volt stuff or at least it's moving that direction there goes somebody so I currently have a previous owner had installed an inverter on the floor here and it's connected directly to these two batteries and from this I could plug something in and like my electric kettle and heat my water up in this uh, or from this but it puts a heavy load on these batteries so what I had planned um, I bought a new 2000 watt pure sign inverter and I was going to reposition this and put it over here remove this one from the floor this inverter has a hardwired output and my plan was to run it into the fuse box for all of the 120 volt appliances and eliminate the generator completely but for me to do that I would have to basically open up and rewire all of the side of the van which isn't such a big deal except my long-term plan was to install lithium batteries and replace the generator completely so instead of doing this partial upgrade and then later having to redo the whole thing oh I forgot to mention that there's a solar panel on the roof it's a 65 watt panel and I installed a new um, solar controller to uh, charge the batteries anyway so uh, instead of doing this partial upgrade and then later having to take it all apart and do it over again I think that I'm just going to go straight to lithium and I'll explain how I'm going to do that so that's current and then the future plan would be to maintain the current batteries install a pair of 200 amp hour lithium batteries back here I still have the solar panel instead of the solar panel charging the original coach batteries this would run directly to the lithiums so that they would always be charging uh, when I'm not in the van or you know while I'm in the van for that matter the generator would go away completely and I would instead of installing the new inverter over here I would install it along with the equipment where it belongs as well as a voltage or battery monitor and the battery or the inverter controller um, you know the on off switch and the solar all on this wall by the bed and this is where the existing thermostat is and a couple of other things there's also an easy way to get into the wiring in this wardrobe closet so this allows me to do a few things one I again with the fuse box being right here I've got all of the wiring in one place so I can run the inverter directly into the 120 volt AC which would operate the microwave and the water heater and the non-existent air conditioner the 12 volt system would then plug into the fuse box for the 12 volt system as it stands which would disconnect these existing 12 volt house batteries so what do I need those for then well I could leave the existing inverter plugged in on the floor here and I may do that or I could swap it out for something smaller just so that I had something available up front this also gives me uh, the ability to continue jump starting the van but these would also be used as a buffer for the DC to DC converter that's necessary to run and charge these lithium batteries unfortunately I have to make some compromises 
So the DC to DC converter would run to the house batteries and I would have a switch on this panel and I've already picked one out. It's one of the aircraft switches with the, uh, the red cover on it, which is kind of neat. So I could turn the charging on and off at will. So the, uh, the DC to DC converter does have a voltage sensing line where it will start charging if the van is running. But I do want the ability to at least partially charge these batteries from the existing house batteries. Now, again, we have to remember that these are fairly low capacity, so I have to do it in the right way. The other thing that I have to keep in mind is this little alternator here is not capable of producing high amperage charge uh, like what the lithium batteries can take. You know, the flooded batteries will take a decreasing amount of amperage to charge them as the resistance increases. The lithium batteries will basically take as much as you can throw at it, or at least whatever the BMS will allow, which is 100 amps. There's no way that I could throw anything close to 100 amps at these batteries when the van is idling, because that would basically overheat and destroy my alternator. So I have to limit the amount of current I'm pulling from it. So my compromise is to only do a 20 amp or 30 amp DC to DC converter. The one that I've got in my Amazon cart right now is a 20. The downside is that that would take an exceptionally long time to charge from completely flat, but the way that I manage my power, I'm not a heavy power user. I don't think that I'll ever get to that point. Plus, I'll always have some power going into the lithium batteries from the solar panel. I have room to upgrade and add another panel if I want to, and I could upgrade this one as well. So I could have a couple hundred watts of power on the roof to charge these lithium batteries all the time. In addition to being able to pull 20 amps from the charging system of the van itself without worrying about damaging the alternator. So what that does mean is if these batteries were completely dead, at 400 amp hours it would take about 20 hours of engine running to charge them from empty. I don't really have to worry about that because I will generally keep them topped off. I can pull a significant amount of power from these batteries in a pinch to operate the house stuff and then recharge these batteries when I start the van. And the additional power from the solar panels will help keep them charged anyway. But like I said, I'm not a heavy power user to begin with. So the highest draw items in here are the water heater, which I may or may not need to use because it's warming the water from the engine coolant, or the microwave, which I would run for a few minutes at a time. Uh, my electric kettle is 700 watts, not a huge load. So I think that I can get away with this. I would still have the ability to plug into shore power in the wiring diagram that I've developed. The only thing that I would lose is the ability to charge the batteries from the existing inverter charger, so that would go away. It doesn't have the output power necessary, and frankly, I just don't plug into shore power anyway. I had my Hymer for almost two years, and the only time that I plugged in shore power was to um, wake the batteries up, the lithium batteries, so during troubleshooting. So I really don't think that this is going to be a problem. So that's kind of the overview. Um, I'm doing this on a budget. So I have a set of lithium batteries that are kind of entry-level lithiums. Um, they, uh, they aren't very expensive. They get decent reviews. So I think that I'll be okay with those. The other components that I have or that I have identified are name brand components that everyone seems to be familiar with. So for about $1,800, hey, it's Maury. Just a quick side note that I wasn't aware of at the time. I may end up with a single 300 amp hour battery instead of a pair of 200s, mostly due to space constraints, but at the same time, it will save me a couple hundred bucks. Okay, so let's get back to the video. I already have a lot of the hardware and uh, supplies necessary for this. I think that that will be a nice functional upgrade and give me the uh, the usability that I've been looking for. 
while also accomplishing my original plan of updating the van to something more current, which, like I said, is one of the reasons that I wanted an older rig to begin with, to have the ability to do this in a way that I want to do it, but also just something to keep myself occupied. It's fun for me to solve these problems and, um, and show you so that maybe it sparks an idea for something that you'd like to do. So I will end this here. If you have any questions about what I'm doing, I have questions about what I'm doing. Uh, leave them in the comments below. And as always, until next time, have a great day.